of your work is groundbreaking because you are looking at human evolution from the perspective of, of investigating fertility patterns. That's right, and we've been able to discover some really fascinating things with it. And I think the key thing here is that we've been able to use these fertility patterns to see that evolution is still going on in this town of Framingham, and that it is changing uh, traits such as height and weight, age at first birth, age at menopause, and this was unexpected. This was quite exciting. Steve chose Framingham for his study because he had access to unprecedented levels of data about local residents spanning 60 years. And by examining how many children tall people have or blonde people have or brown-eyed people have, Steve has been able to work out what the next generation might look like. It's an entirely new approach to the study of evolution. Well, it's interesting if one goes back and looks at the way that um, Darwin formulated natural selection. Darwin thought mostly about mortality. And uh, it wasn't until sometime in the mid to late 20th century that people really realized that it's not really mortality, it's reproductive success that is what's changing gene frequencies. So given what you've already measured, can you be specific about the changes in height and weight that you might expect to see in the future? Now, what we have found with height and weight basically is that natural selection appears to be operating to reduce the height and to slightly increase their weight. So people are getting shorter, shorter and, and fatter? They're, they're becoming more pleasingly plump. <laughs> and do you think this is something which is I mean, is, it, is this a real biological change? Is it a genetic change? Or are we just looking at a cultural influence? Are, are people just eating more? Well, there's no doubt that there are big cultural effects on things like, like weight. But we can estimate what the genetic component is of the variation in height or the variation in weight. So we're pulling out a small genetic signal. And a fairly small selection pressure, and if this were to act consistently, it would add up to major change. It isn't the evolutionary future that many of us would have expected, but there it is, shorter and fatter. But perhaps we won't be heading in that direction forever. Well, I think what's very probably going on is that selection is moving a population up and down all the time. It goes off in a certain direction for a while, and then it goes back in the other direction. It's only if you get a significant change in the environment that it will then continuously go in a new direction. Can you predict anything else about how we might evolve in the future? Are there, are there any other traits that we might see coming to the fore? In the long term, I think that where we are going at this point is actually absolutely unknown. We see rapid evolution when there's rapid environmental change, and the biggest part of our environment is culture, and culture is exploding. That's, I really think, the, the take-home message of the Framingham study, that we are continuing to evolve, that biology is going to change with the culture, and that it's, it's just a matter of not being able to see it because we're stuck right in the middle of the process right now. It seems that far from being over, our evolution is impossible to stop. And the enormous changes in the way we live over the last century may be driving it even faster than ever.